Man, I could never spend that much money on a car. I paid like three grand for my last, you know, used gas vehicle. How much are you paying a month in gas? Oh, I don't know, a couple hundred bucks, sometimes a little bit more if I go on a road okay. trip. Okay, so 200 a month, that's like 2,400 a year? Yeah, I guess. And how long have you been driving that vehicle? The past decade, maybe 11 or 12 years. 2,400 a year? 12 years. Also factor in, you know, your brake pads, your oil changes. Okay. So, I think you are dropping over $30,000 on your car. You just didn't do it all at once. Yeah, but even if I got one of your weird electric cars, my electric bill would go up. And the grid is kind of dirty energy anyway. What if I told you there was a cheaper vehicle that didn't need the grid? What are you saying? That I'll be able to pull gasoline out of thin air? No, Neo. I'm saying, you won't have to. There is no spoon. So I had a great interview with Chris Anthony a couple of weeks ago, and there's still a lot of really impactful and kind of mind-blowing information bombs packed into that 30-minute interview. And I understand it's a long video, so not everybody can watch the whole thing, but I wanted to highlight one of the sections that he dove into that really got my gears turning, and I honestly haven't been able to stop thinking about since he mentioned it, because essentially, I hope most of you are aware right now, Aptera is in the securing funding stage. They need funding to get the production tooling to start, and they just received a huge California grant and they have more Department of Energy loans coming in, more investors coming in left and right. So I'm very hopeful for their future, but they're starting with the launch edition Aptera, which the reason they're starting with that one is because it was the most popular trim out of all of their reservations. And of course it has amazing specs. You know, it's like $33,000, 400 miles of total range plus 40 miles of free range per day as long as it's sunny out with full solar, all wheel drive, zero to 60 in four seconds and all that beautiful stuff. And of course, the first vehicle in North America that's not a Tesla that's rocking the Nax connector. So check, 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 check. Uh, just an amazing vehicle across the board. I can't wait to see them out in the roads. But Aptera has told us that the vehicle they plan on making after the launch edition, basically, once they've ramped up production of the 400 mile range variant, they want to next introduce the cheaper option. Unlike a lot of these startups that are like, let's begin with our $180,000 dream edition. No, it's just a made up name. I don't know who actually would charge that much for a vehicle, right? That's ridiculous. But Aptera is intentionally going more towards the affordable side with their next vehicle. And even though that one was not the most popular order configuration, I think that it actually might be the secret winner. It might be the underdog that people don't really notice right now because according to Chris in our interview, he mentioned that the smallest battery pack on the Aptera will likely get better efficiency than 100 watt hours per mile, which if you know anything about EV electricity consumption, that is just just like nutty how little energy that vehicle would be consuming. If I drive my Model 3 really slowly and kind of downhill and I'm just like very feather foot I guess on the accelerator pedal, is that a word? I can maybe get it to about 200 watt hours per mile whereas the Aptera across the board they're targeting 100 watt hours per mile and the cheapest option which they originally said would have about a 25 kilowatt hour battery pack but Chris mentioned that they're still not locked in with that battery capacity and there's other supply agreements that they're debating and it's possible they might actually end up going forward with more like an 18 kilowatt hour battery pack which at first glance you may not think is that great an idea because we assume 100 watt hours per mile then an 18 kilowatt hour pack means a 180 mile range so yeah not too encouraging but that's where the significance of getting sub 100 watt hours per mile comes in because already we know that the launch edition Aptera is under 2,000 pounds and that's with a 45 kilowatt kilowatt hour battery pack in this thing. So if we started like cutting the battery pack, which is the heaviest part of the vehicle in half, we could start seeing the entry level cheap Aptera approaching the like 1500 pounds or maybe less than that. And because it weighs so little, but it still accommodates for that incredibly aerodynamic design, it might actually still beat 200 miles of range estimated by the EPA without needing a 20 plus kilowatt hour battery pack. So not only would that improve on the affordability, so maybe they could even go cheaper than the $26,000 starting price they were originally targeting, but I do want to emphasize how much it 
advantage there is to having an even more efficient vehicle, which I thought 100 watt hours per mile was crazy. Aptera's over here on the freaking moon thinking about how do we get it down to 80 watt hours per mile, which to give you just a little bit of perspective on that, for the record, that would be well over 350 miles per gallon equivalent. And it essentially means that the battery in my laptop right now could power an entire vehicle capable of sitting two people plus having 32 cubic feet of storage in the bed. And if you could harness all of that power out of my MacBook battery, you could get that vehicle to go over a mile with all of that weight and all of that mass. Plus it's a HVAC system and a display and all infotainment and all that. That's how little energy we're talking about this vehicle consuming. And that means that the cost of ownership also continues to decrease. So I actually think that this model might become very, very popular among people that are looking for secondary commuter vehicles. So of course, Aptera and many others in the community understand that this three-wheeled two-seater is not trying to be your last vehicle. It's not trying to replace, you know, your three-row SUVs or your F-150s. This is meant to be a secondary vehicle with such incredibly little maintenance so that when you're just driving yourself to work, or maybe it's just you and your spouse or just one other person driving to the grocery store and back, or maybe it's a road trip with just one person or two people, how can I move two people and some cargo in the most efficient possible manner? And as long as those use cases like driving to work or driving to the grocery stores is able to displace the amount of gas you need to pay for in your larger vehicles, then that Aptera will start to pay for itself very quickly. Because for one, I think that Aptera is probably going to continue pushing for the full solar package. So solar panels completely covering the whole thing with 700 watts. That means throughout the day on a super efficient Aptera with like a smaller 18 kilowatt hour battery pack. Now it's not just getting 40 miles of range added back per day. Now you're talking closer to 50 miles of range per day, which means like over 10% of the battery can be charged up as long as you live in a sunny climate. And of course, the average American is driving 30 to 40 miles per day. So this vehicle, as long as it's got a 200 mile range battery pack, is still going to be more than enough for a bunch of Americans. And sure, it may not replace every single vehicle, every single use case, but it's a vehicle that you don't need to make room for in your garage. In fact, you're incentivized to leave it outside, charge in the sun. It's a vehicle that you don't have to install an expensive level two charger for, you know, you don't have to get quotes from the electrician. How much is it going to cost for me to put in a NEMA 1450 outlet so I can fast charge this thing? No, you probably won't even have to plug the dang thing in. And even if you are in a very cloudy climate or you're in the winter months where it gets really cold and your range is cut in half, you can charge it off of a 110 outlet. And because that vehicle would be so freaking efficient, you would get more than 10 or 13 miles of range per hour. You would be getting more like 16 to 18 miles of range added back per hour. Not to mention, you don't even have to look around and find a specific DC fast charging station with a battery pack that small because even a basic charge point, you know, level two station, which a lot of them are free with seven kilowatts of charge power. That means within an hour, you have seven kilowatt hours. And now if you're getting more like 11 to 12 miles per kilowatt hour instead of 10, you can get 84 miles of range back within one hour just stopped at a level two station, which slower chargers are just inherently always going to be cheaper than fast chargers. The entry level price of that super lightweight, super aerodynamic, super efficient Aptera would likely be lower than the 26,000. And for a lot of people, they wouldn't even plug this dang thing in. So it's that configuration. It's that trim I'm referring to as basically the cheapest enclosed vehicle you could possibly buy, right? I'm not comparing it to a motorcycle like Sondor's where it has a maximum range of like 60 or 80 miles and you got to wear a motorcycle helmet and everything. No, the Aptera is still a vehicle you get inside. You know, it's got windshield wipers. You can drive it around in the rain. It'll have an HVAC system. You can keep yourself cool or warm depending on the climate. Multiple people can sit in it and you've got tons of storage in the back. But if you got a loan on this vehicle, you could be dropping like 15 or $12,000 up front. And then the monthly payment is about equivalent to what a gas bill would be for an internal combustion engine vehicle. And then once that loan runs out and you still own the car, now you're driving around for free. And basically all you're going to be paying for is registration and insurance, but the fuel costs will be next to nothing. And it doesn't have that insane entry price that you have to do for Teslas in order to get them powered for free by the sun. You know, you got to buy a 40 to $50,000 car and then a 40 to $60,000 solar panel system. And yes, that'll power your house as well, but it's still requiring, you know, somewhere between an 80 to $120,000 upfront investment. Whereas the Aptera, a lot of people could probably get by with like a $10,000 upfront investment.
investment. So sure, it's not gonna be the vehicle that you load all the kids into, but I think there's a ton of people that wouldn't consider having a secondary vehicle because of the extra expense and all of the extra chores of trying to find a place to park it and keep it inside and maintaining the transmission and having to pay for gas on it and all that. Whereas the Aptera, I think, could convince a bunch of people who are often driving by themselves, which is the norm, unfortunately, in the U.S., is a lot of people just driving these ginormous seven-seater SUVs to work and back because that's just the vehicle they happen to have. Whereas the Aptera, I think, will be pushing back on a lot of people with that. Not to mention, once we get into the used market with Apteras and the price starts dropping, once those vehicles have some miles on them, yeah, I genuinely think the Aptera will basically undercut all other electric vehicles because of how small the battery pack is and how aerodynamic and efficient it is. And a huge emphasis on simple body parts and making those body panels as lightweight and as structural as possible. And now that we're talking about the possibility of having more than 40 miles of range added back per day through solar cells, I feel like the market is huge here and people don't really realize it yet. So hopefully this video gives you some perspective on some of the amazing things that can be unlocked once you do have a big emphasis on efficiency and how lightweight you can make the vehicle. But what do you think? Would a cheaper like twenty-four dollars or $23,000 Aptera with 220 miles of range be interesting to you guys? Or do you still plan on road tripping so you want that longer range? Feel free to let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly. Seriously, helps us out a ton, as does just watching these videos. So thanks again. Have an excellent rest of your day.